Okay, so we're going to take some notes on uh, 5.6 today, and uh, we'll see how quickly this goes, and then I'll let you know. But um, so 5.6 is where we need to be at. Again, it, this is the nice part about doing it this way is you can pause this at any time should you need to. So I'm actually going to suggest that you pause here coming up uh, to write down these definitions, okay? I defined linear inequality below. I also defined uh, solution of a linear equality in two variables below. So the first one here that we need to look at is going to be the graph of linear equality. It's a solid or dashed line with a true half plane shaded. And we will talk about exactly what that means. So I'm going to move on pretty quickly because you could pause this video to write this down. Plus, you don't need to hear me, listen to me, write all these down. So Again, that linear equality is a solid or dashed line, uh, dashed line to graph a line and then shading above or below to indicate the true half plane. So we're going back to graphing. We're graphing lines again. It's going to have a solid line or a dashed line. We'll talk about what that means here in a second. And then uh, the solution is going to be any point that makes the inequality true or it falls in the shaded region if we have a graph that we're looking at. So again, pause. I'm going to move on. Pause this if you need to pause it uh, to get those definitions written down. But we're going to go talk about these. So uh, for example, the first one, uh, our, our expression is 2 times x. Well, x is 2. Okay, so remember this is x and this is y. So we're going to go into this guy right here. Okay, 2 times 2 minus 3 times 5 is that value less than 15. So we end up with a 4 minus a 15. Is that less than 15? And uh, that's negative 11, which is less than 15. So that checks out. Okay, that will be a solution for that inequality. Okay. And we just keep on moving through these like that, okay? All of these are coordinate pairs. We're going to determine if it's true. So uh, there's four examples here. This is going to get boring after a while, but uh, we'll see what we got. So again, your first step is just to plug X and Y into the inequality, okay? There isn't anything special about that. We've been doing that since almost day one as far as evaluating a function. And evaluating this, this is going to give me negative 2 plus 21, which is less than 15. That will end up with a 19, be less than 15, so that means this is no. Um, the next one is 2 times 3, and I would encourage you probably to go ahead and uh, pause this and then try it on your own and then fire it up, I guess. I don't know what the best way for you to do it is, but you have your choices. Whatever works for you. Anyway, because this one's going to be another false one. 18 is not less than 15. Now, the last one's actually a little bit more important because we use this one a lot when determining where to shade at. And it's really an easy point to use because 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0, um, there's no, uh, there, this is the easiest math we're going to do all semester long because those are both zeros, and 0 is less than 15. So that one does check out. That one is a solution. And we'll, talk, we'll use 0, 0 a lot later on, okay? Now, before we get into uh, filling in the blanks here, um, and uh, we just have to real fast remember if I graphed x is greater than or equal to 4 and we graphed that on a number line we had to remember 4 and because of the, the equal to sign here 4 is included as equal to 4 so that means we did a solid circle at 4 and we went greater than that value okay likewise if we had greater than 4 because 4 is not greater than 4 when we have this scenario that was when we use the open circle at 4 and went that way so we, we have what happens is we have to be able to do that in a linear application versus just a number line application so we're going to come down here and fill in the blanks here when we graph these now again i'm following somebody else's notes i will graph it in any form it comes in but they focused on strictly graphing by y equals mx plus b Okay, so for those of us that are struggling, I know let's just stick to one and just nail it down. Okay, uh, actually, if you're an intercept grapher, we'll talk about the ones we can do intercept-wise. But uh, really, again, this this is this is makes it pretty is easy if we solve for y. Okay, be sure to flip the inequality sign if we multiply or divide by a negative number. Okay, so again, we're dealing with an inequality, so that means we have to remember to do all those little things. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, there's two parts to this, okay? We can see those two parts are laid out. We're going to graph the line, and then we're going to shade the true half plane. I like that. I'm going to put that in here. Shade true half plane. 
All right, so well, like I tried to, try to say earlier, uh, we so what happens in we are graphing? We have solid lines, and we have dashed lines when we plot a linear inequality. So that's what we're going to fill in all of these blanks with. So we're going to use a saw dashed line. It doesn't matter. For symbols that are greater than or less than symbols. Again, so much like we used a open circle for those two symbols, okay? Now we're going to use a dashed line. We're going to use a solid line. When we have greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Okay, so those are the two things that we have to remember. We're going to do a dashed line and a solid line. And then we're going to shade the true half plane. Okay, so we're going to shade the above the line for greater than or greater than or equal to. We're going to shade below the line for less than or less than or equal to. And we'll talk about that in a second. We'll talk about other ways that we can graph this, a lot of different things that we can hopefully uh, find which one that you, you prefer. But here we go. First of all, we have to graph this, okay? Um, uh, it's a horrible, I don't, I don't like this example. It's, actually, we're gonna start with number 10 and we'll work back to that one just because, uh, yeah, it really doesn't matter, I guess. Uh, Anyway, we're going to start at there. I guess I'll come back to number nine. I can't. Two, three, four, five. So again, we're going to start at that y-intercept. That y-intercept is here, a negative five. And then I'm going to go up one, and I'm going to go over three. So that would be this point there. I'm going to go up one, another one, and over three. And it's going to be that point there. And we'll get several of these dots in here, so that way that I can uh, make a pretty succinct line. So there's down one, and left three, down one, left three, down one, left three. As there as that is. Now, here's the come where it's a little bit hard. And this is why I didn't like this as the first one. And, and I just, I drew, I drew that wrong. Back up. This is going to be a dashed line. Okay. <clears throat> a dashed line. Okay. Now, we said there's two parts to this. We're going to A, graph a line. We're going to B, shade it. Okay, what happens is when we graph that inequality, it splits it into a half plane, just like up here when we did when we did up here. Okay, this kind of split it into a right half and a left half, and we would shade the true half plane up here as well. We would shade to the right, which is what that was. So instead of being one dimensional on a number line, now we're two dimensional, and we have to shade this. Okay, so now let's go back to our steps up here. If we are if it's greater than or greater than or equal to, we're going to shade above. And this is what this when we solve it for y, that I am going to shade the y-axis above the line that I just drew. So if I come over here with my finger, I'm going to shade the y-axis. I can either shade it above, which is up here, or I can shade it below the line that I just drew. So I want to because of that greater than sign, I want to shade above the line that I just drew. So that's the area I'm going to shade. Okay, so that's one way to do it. If you solve for y all the time, boom, you don't have to think of anything else. Okay, however, we learned to test a point for a reason. Um, zero, zero is this point that we always test right here. So if I tested this, zero is less than one third of zero minus five. And I end up with zero greater than negative five. And zero is greater than negative five. So that is my true half plane. And sure enough, I've already shaded it. So I was good to go. But it's just a couple of different ways that I could use, excuse me, to shade that. In number 10. Okay. And again, if I'm running too fast, this is nice because you can pause me. We're going to start with one below. We're going to go down two and over one. And we're going to keep going down two and over one. I could go up two and left one. Now this one, when I draw it, because it has the equal to sign here, we are now going to draw a solid line. Okay, and again, I'm going to go back to this. I am going to shade the y-axis below because it's less than the lines that I just drew. So here's the y-axis. 
Part of it is above the line, part of it is below the line. I'm going to shade the part that is less than, so I'm going to shade below the line. This is the area that I'm going to shade. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so again, if we were testing points, 0 is less than negative 2 times 0 minus 1. So I end up with 0 being less than or equal to negative 1, which is false. So 0, 0 is on the false half plane. And if I look, if I use a different color here, here is 0, 0, and it was above the line, which fell into the false half plane. So again, testing a point can also get us to the right spot. Okay. So here it boils down to what you want to do. We got four more problems to do here. If you're in two of those, we don't even have to solve for anything. They are simple. So I will, I am going to graph uh, one of these each way. You tell me what you can figure out which way you like. But we are solving, uh, we have to put this in slope intercept form. So I am going to subtract the 5x over. So we get negative 2y is greater than negative 5x plus 12. And then we'll divide by a negative 2. And this is the part that in the notes we made point, a point to highlight this. When we divide by a negative sign, which we have in this case, we divided by a negative 2, we must switch the inequality sign. So we got, it becomes less than 5 halves x minus 6. And again, second verse, same as the first. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. There's my negative 6 for my y-intercept. I'm going to go up 5 and over 2. We're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 2. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 2. And down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 2. All right, so there's that lays out my line. Now I have to decide, is it dashed or is it solid? So in this case, again, we're going to look for my sign. There is Basically, the line underneath fills in my line. It's a dashed line unless there's a fill-in. So there's no fill-in there. So we're going to make a dashed line down here. Okay, there's my dashed line. Again, we draw the line, we shade the true half plane. Again, it's determining, we put it in slope intercept form. That makes it easy. Again, I am going to shade the y axis that is less than or below the line that I just drew. So here it is again. Here is my y axis. This part of the line is above, this part of the line is below. I was forced to switch my sign, notice. And we're going to shade below the line. So let's shade that. And now we're going to verify by using, again, 0, 0. And we're going to go back to the original because that is where it's the easiest. Because 0 minus 2 times 0 is greater than 12. Well, all of that is just 0. Is 0 greater than 12? I think not. Okay, so that means this is not true. So that means that 0, 0 again, is lying in the false half plane. So there is 0, 0. This should not be the shaded side. And sure enough, that's the way it came out. Okay. All right. I am going to graph this one the other way. Again, I'm an intercept grapher. If this works for you, I mean, we'll solve it for Y in a second here, just because I can. Uh, and I'll show you both ways. But, I mean, the other one, I was going to end up with a fraction. That's the only bad thing about intercepts. Sure, we could have graphed uh, 2, what is that, 2.4? Um, for an x-intercept, but we'd have been we'd have been okay. It's I mean here across the two point. It's all estimates anyway. We're not being an exact science, but this is easy because x is equal to eight. Negative four is equal to eight, so that means that y is equal to negative two. So when we graph this, we're going to put a point on eight on the x-axis. We're going to put another point at negative two on the y-axis. That actually generated my slope if I wanted to, so I could go eight more to the left and then down two more and get another point over here just to, to have a line, okay? Again, once I know where my line goes, I have to determine am I drawing a solid line or I'm drawing a dashed line. I'm going to come look at my sign. My sign does not have anything underneath it, so my line is not going to get filled in. It needs to be a dashed line. So we're going to draw a dashed line across here. Okay? Now I have to decide, am I going to be shading above this line or below this line? And here's where you be, have to be a little bit more cautious. And this is where you probably should test a point, okay? Zero, zero. Uh, this is where we should just go back to line uh, point testing on this, okay? 
0 minus 4 times 0. Well, automatically that goes to 0. Is 0 less than 8? It sure is. So this becomes the true half, okay? Now, the thing is, when we solve for y, well, actually, let's do that now, all right? Let's say you don't like to do that. Let's say you like to solve a point in its point, inter, excuse, slope intercept form like it says that we should do everything. So I'm going to subtract the x over, get negative 4y is less than negative x plus 8. We're going to divide that negative 4 out of there. And so y is going to equal 1 fourth x minus 2. So here again, we started at negative 2. It went up 1 and over 4. It went up 1 and over 4. So again, it fell on my line. We did everything there. Except I got an equal 2 sign in here. I don't know how. You can't stop me from that far off from, from watching on YouTube, can you? Anyway, we divided by a negative sign. Here it is. Negative, negative, negative. So that means that we need to switch my inequality sign. So this should be greater than. So I'm going to shade the y-axis above the line that I drew. And sure enough, I come over here and I shaded the y-axis above the line that I drew. And just because I like to squirrel my pointer around, there it is. Okay, have some more. All right, two more to go, and then I'll just shut her down, and you have the rest of the time to work. So this is a block day, so I, I, you know, I thought this was going to take me 30 minutes to roll through, and I bet I'm, I don't know how long I've been, maybe 20. I don't have a timer on this, but here we go. We're only, we only have one variable here because it is y is less than or equal to negative 4. So it's got one variable. It's going to cross one axis. It is going to cross the y-axis. Where is it going to cross the y-axis at? Well, negative 4, Okay. So I know that the only thing that happens here is the y values are all negative 4. So I'm going to draw a line here, okay? It's just going to go across, okay, here at negative 4. Now, I have again, I have to determine, am I drawing a solid line across here or a dashed line across here? Because it's got the bar underneath it, that means we're going to fill in the line, and it becomes a solid line. So here's my solid line across, okay? And now we have to decide. I am going to shade the y-axis that is below the line that I drew. So that means we're going to shade underneath. And again, if I have to test points to figure that out, I'm going to test 0, 0 again. So 0 is less than negative 4. Nope. So that's why 0, 0, which is right here, okay, 0, 0 is here. It fell on the false half plane, and we have that in our graph. Okay, one more to go. x is greater than 7. Again, there's only one variable involved. That is x. So the only axis that it's going to cross is going to be the x-axis. It is going to cross here at 7. That wasn't necessarily at 7. These are 10 by 10, so there's 10, there's 9, there's 8, and there's 7. Again, it only crosses the x-axis, so for in order for that to happen... <laughs> in order for that to... Sorry, my daughter is trying to make me laugh or do something. It's so oh, well. Okay, that's fine. Keep talking because I'll hear you. All right, so now we're going to make a vertical line here at 7. So is it solid or is it dashed? You got a 50-50 shot, Piper. What is it? Solid or dashed? Dashed. It is dashed. Wow, look, she is a good guesser. All right, so all right, so we've got because, again, there is no line underneath here. We're going to leave it as a dashed line, and we're going to do a dashed line down here at 7. I can do high math. Yeah, you can do high school math. Surely by guessing. Okay, now, again, this is, works a little bit different because... Uh, this is this works actually like a number line. I'm going to shade greater than 7, so that means it needs to be the right of 7. And uh, there we go. All right. I have killed enough of your time today. So, again, make sure that you're hopefully using your time wisely uh, and get those big ideas assignments done. Uh, because if we don't use them time wise, I, I, it, it just, there's a ton, ton today. All right. I'll shut up.